다음 모실 연사분은요. 세계적으로 떠오르는 젊은 디자인 리더입니다. 영국 레이어 스튜디오 대표이신 벤자민 휴버트 연사인데요. 나이키, 펩시, BMW, 삼성, 브라운 네 정말 글로벌 유수 브랜드들이죠. 프로젝트를 진행하면서 인류가 앞으로 살아가고 일하고 또 소통하는 방식에 큰 영향을 미칠 제품들을 직접 디자인을 해 오셨습니다. 레드다 디자인 최우수상 또 IF 디자인상을 수상한 바 있는 벤자민 휴버트 네, 팬데믹 상황으로 인해서 온라인으로 모시게 된점 다시 한번 양해 부탁드리면서요. 강연 주제는 Design for Our Changing Times, 변화하는 시대에서 디자인이란 입니다. 자, 지금부터 벤자민 휴버트의 강연 함께 하시겠습니다. My name is Benjamin Hubert. I'm the founder of Layer. Uh, Layer is a strategic design agency in East London. Our work really covers a wide range of products and um, types of work. So we work across physical design, um, industrial design of a wide range of um, hardware, whether that's um, consumer electronics, um, the next communication tools, audio tools, the things that we surround ourselves with to um, absorb and enjoy media and communicate better with everybody around the world, which is um, incredibly important at the moment. But we also, on a, the other end of the spectrum, from a physical point of view, work on um, things that we might consider to be uh, new heirlooms, meaning things you keep for a really long amount of time. That might be uh, beautiful objects you surround yourself with, um, ceramics, glass, quite craft-oriented oriented things. We work on a lot of kind of interiors and, and seating solutions and the future of mobility, um, and that can be um, automotive or it could be um, airline. Um, we, we do a lot of very small things, so think um, in-ear, um, headphones, um, wearables, things that are very close to your body and helps uh, consumers and users to understand more about what they're doing. Um, to complement that, we also work on some digital aspects, meaning um, services, applications, websites, portals, platforms, for people to either uh, consume um, information or, or elevate a service or enhance an inter in interaction, and, and often in, in combination with a piece of hardware. So how do you create a holistic system of service and physical product. I truly believe that everything is about delivering a great experience and to deliver, to deliver a great experience you need to communicate really well as a company, position yourself really well, have great long-lasting well-made products and deliver an exceptional service and getting somebody like Leia to do all of those things means that it's really joined up, it's really holistic, it's really connected and everything is speaking the same language and has the same tone of voice. Um, and we've, we've been doing this type of work for, I mean, Leia has, has been running for around um, six years. Um, I, I personally am, am trained as an industrial designer and, and then um, evolved my knowledge into what Leia is today. So a team of um, 25 to 30 creatives all working very collaboratively together. So some of the projects that we do at Layer are um, production. You know, we work on something for six months, 12 months, 24 months to drive it to production and, and have something that goes from conversation and concept to a consumer's hand in, in, a, in a really short time frame. But also sometimes we work on kind of future gazing and, and more far out concepts. So one such concept was Join, where we looked at an autonomous riding experience um, and uh, this was around modularity and bringing people together in an environment where they also felt comfortable being partly separate and partly together. So the togetherness was really around reducing uh, carbon footprint um, and making sure through ride sharing that uh, the amount of carbon somebody uses to let's say catch a taxi or a, 
or, or you know, Uber or, or something like that. It's far reduced when you share, but no one loves the idea of sharing with strangers. So we developed a modular seating um, system within this autonomous vehicle that was about a dividing system um, where you have the luxury of like a business cl class flight experience with the ability to open and shut interactive areas and the facility to have whatever media device you would like, both charged and displayed and to be used properly um, uh, as, as, as a facility. Um, but the, the beauty of this was that we really specified something where you could have um, something with four seats in the vehicle, six, for instance, or even eight. Um, and they all kind of yin and yang together to create a very dense seating system, but also allowing a great deal of separation. And the irony is, is this concept was something we worked on pre-COVID, but became much more relevant in a, in a post-COVID world where you know, we're going to need to be even more mindful of the world around us, but also mindful of how much time and separation we're spending with our peers and colleagues and friends and strangers. Um, and so this was a meeting and melting pot of those two points. Um, and you know, designed with a sense of homeliness and comfort and generous um, materiality that would give you the reassurance and peace of mind to travel together with, with other people, but in the luxury of comfort and functional benefits you would expect if, if you were having a meeting as much as if you were relaxing in a lounge chair. As designers and creatives at Layer, we, we've never really been in a greater um, uh, time of change. You know, normally as a, as a designer, you're looking for things that will drive new features and opportunities for a product or service. Um, and, and, and you're always looking at you know, the trends and behaviors and the world, way the world's shifting to influence how something new might be beneficial and better than what came before. Um, right now, clearly, with things like global pandemics driving uh, behavior changes, it, it's never been more palpable that our lives have, have, have changed more than they, they, they are at the moment. But this means for us that um, all types of products are changing, um, whether it's the simplest um, uh, product you, you surround yourself with at home. And, and because we're spending more time at home, we're analyzing those products, we're choosing them more carefully, they're, they're needed to enhance our everyday much more because we've never been in a state of mental well-being that's needed to be um, comforted and enhanced. Um, also, you know, the, 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 the fact that we clearly can't travel means that the communication tools must get better. Um, and they've always needed to get better, but there's never been such a need for them to be better. We've always managed to use, um, you know, much more old-fashioned means of communicating, we've been able to travel, we've been able to see each other's mouths when we're, when we're speaking to each other face to face. You know, with the barriers that are in place now, which will, will almost be in, be in place now forever, I, I, I believe, to some extent, meaning you know, personal protective equipment stops us showing our emotions. Um, the fact that we can't travel because of restrictions on borders means that how do you become, how do you communicate as a human, in a human way, um, like we used to. So like, that's an amazing driver of change for both services, like you know, um, a, a video conferencing platform, or, or tools like our mobile devices, and how they need to now adapt, because that change is real. Um, you know, this, 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 is, this is also affecting you know, many other things, like uh, modes of transport, how we're sharing transport with, with other people, our proximity to our fellow passengers, and how we can um, also temper that with sustainability because right now it might be forced on us that we can't fly to lots of places so therefore it seems like we're being more mindful of the planet but that's not a choice that's something we're being told to do i think what's going to be really interesting is when we when this all resumes you know in the, in the coming months hopefully is how do we still have a mandate that actually prioritizes the world around us as much as our our physical uh, and mental needs um, and I think you know, all of these things are like ingredients and, and, and if you think about design like a recipe and a dish you're creating, then these, these ingredients have become bigger, juicier, more flavorful and more interesting um, 
but full of challenges. And then what is that dish that you're, you're building and making, which lots of people want to consume, that doesn't feel too scary and new, um, but also makes them feel better. Um, and I think it's very much around like filling all those buckets up with the ingredients and then building a new recipe for the future. At Layer, we use a lot of um, methods to, to prototype. So we might traditionally use quite a lot of analog, handmade, uh, you know, cutting card and paper out to build maquettes and models. Um, but increasingly, we use more digitally driven tools around rapid prototyping. So crudely speaking, you know, 3, 3D printing and, and things where you can quickly build at um, a small scale or one-to-one -one scale, something very reflective of a physical piece of design quite quickly. Now, um, that, that, that is something that's been around for quite a while, and, uh, but what I think is a, is a really interesting change in the sort of last um, maybe 10 years is how those tools have started to become opportunities to manufacture things. So the idea of a fourth um, revolution in, in, in industrialization really means that the equipment um, has, has changed to be able to, to manufacture one-offs um, en masse anywhere in the world without the incumbent massive factory setup that you would normally have in, in perhaps parts of Asia where, where we work a lot with our manufacturing. Um, th this provides opportunities of customization, uh, tailoring things to your needs, tailoring them to your um, emotional needs, not just physical, um, and generating products that are really made to measure and, and benefit the individual user much more greatly. The, the, the challenge we've still got is, is cost and um, how accessible it is. So, you know, you're, you're open and read lots and lots of things about 3D printed this and 3D printed that. And, you know, we've had the opportunity to, to use it on things like, um, you know, uh, wheelchairs with, with Nike and, and, and lots of products like that. But back to the accessibility point, it's still quite cost prohibitive. Um, you need a very high skill set to be able to use it really well. Um, and it still is, there's question marks around durability and robustness over time. Um, having said that, it is a really interesting platform to start thinking about uh, new products and services and how we can have something that is, is made on the mass, but each one is for the individual. So sustainability is, is, a, is a huge mandate for us here as a, as a group of designers. Um, we, we think about sustainability in a very kind of multi-layered fashion though, hence sort of the, the coining of layer, you know, design processes is, is layered, value is multi-layered, um, but in sustainability it's never been truer. Um, I, I think the you know, important thing is never to greenwash and never to just create something that seems to be recyclable but isn't actually recyclable. Um, it's really to think about longevity and value to the consumer and user of these products. So we try and build things and make things and design things that are, um, will stand the test of time. So the longevity piece, you know, will somebody use something for 10, 15, 20 years? Will they pass it down to other family members? And if they're going to do that, it has to have two things. It has to have quality and it has to have timelessness. So timelessness meaning a design language that stands the test of time, but also a technology platform that can be upgraded and will last and can be changed depending on the requirements of the individual and also other systems that are in place in terms of how they live and how services change. So if a product lives with you for a really long time, it sort of doesn't matter what you make it from um, and, and how you make it, and even to an extent whether it's recycled, and that might sound very, very um, counterintuitive, but the very fact that if you earn something, if you own something over a sort of 20 year period, the initial energy investment is amortized to be such a small amount over that time that actually the carbon footprint is incredibly small. Um, that, that, that's sort of our, always our first goal. If we can get the um, brand partner we work with, so we've got many brands all over the world from Europe, US to, the, to Asia, to also invest in the use of a sustainable material meaning that perhaps it's um, ethically and, and sustainably sourced, um, perhaps it can be biodegraded or recycled, um, and perhaps the energy to use, used to create it is, is much lower. Fantastic. But that also requires a brand to change their manufacturing setup often. Then that's an, another amazing aspect of climate change that, that, that he helps uh, slow down or, or to an extent prevent climate change from happening. But these are 
th these are three things which are the sort of pillars of a, a huge sustainable product or service, um, and, and we try and achieve all of them in the process. When we think about a new product or, or service, particularly when a partner first comes to us with a brief or an idea or some passion around a, a new space they want to enter or, or a new product they want to deliver, the first questions are why? Why, why should it exist? Um, who's going to use it? And then what format should it take? So, you know, we, we try to think quite digitally first when, when we can. So sometimes um, perhaps you don't need another piece of hardware because the device in your pocket or the the screen you already have, the, the, the notebook or whatever it might be, you might fulfill that as a, as a piece of hardware. So then we start thinking about what is the service that can deliver that? Because if you can do that, the carbon footprint of whatever you're producing is much, much smaller. And ultimately, you know, all the apps on our phone, you could argue each one could have a piece of hardware. It would be crazy, right? Imagine how many pieces of hardware specific to each app. And maybe there are even some hardware benefits to doing that. But it's a bit counterintuitive to thinking holistically about the health of the world as well. So, you know, can you solve something with an app? Can you solve it with a with a, a web app or a portal or a platform or or something in a store that allows you to um, seamlessly reduce your um, a customer journey to make it easier? Um, and and for us, that's just about um, can the can you dematerialize a product and deliver it with a digital experience? A lot of our projects at Layer um, are very sustainably focused. Um, on the sort of slightly simpler side of things, if, if we're designing a, a piece of furniture, for instance, like the axle chair that I'm sitting in, um, we would look at uh, recycled aluminium because of the energy um, used to produce it has already been spent, large proportions of it anyway. Um, uh, biodegradable plastics or plastics with um, more natural um, materials, um, again, really like the axle chair, and, and ensuring that it has a sense of minimalism and modernism that stands the test of time. Now, now that's a very um, sim simple example, and it is very much about shape and um, materials. You know, there's a there's a functionality there which means you know it stacks, it's comfortable, but that's that's sort of the bare minimum you would require from any piece of furniture. Um, but it's a good example as a very base level, how do you create a very simple type of product sustainably? Um, and, and I believe that any of that type of furniture should be around for a long time. So you do need to think about its impact um, and, and how that future is changing and, and the requirements in terms of specification and how sustainable something has to be. Um, on, on a slightly more complex level, but still very hardware related, um, I would use the examples of some of the Bang Olufsen speakers that we've created uh, in Balance and Emerge, and in particular Emerge. So both of those speakers use quite timeless forms, pure geometry, um, shapes, and the feeling of a product which stands the test of time. Um, they, they also have extremely good and high quality components inside them, meaning that they last a really long time. But that product then is amortized over such a long amount of time, that investment is much, much less, rather than kind of fast fashion products, which you need to replace all the time. Um, the one interesting element about Emerge is that you can actually not just upgrade the firmware, so the software to, to, um, to make sure it always communicates with the service and is always tuning the speaker to be its best, um, but also you can upgrade some of the hardware. So you can open it and you can replace components as things need upgrading from a, a performance and functionality standpoint. So that has some of the qualities that a piece of furniture like Axle we might create has, but then it adds in the upgradability from a hardware perspective. So if we were to have an even more uh, extreme example of how we kind of future-proof products and, and, and try and make them really sustainable, I, I would use the, um, even though it's a concept, um, the wheelchair that we um, worked on with Nike being the Go wheelchair and and really that was about tailoring so making something made to measure using a 3D scan 3D printed much more comfortable seating component which the person would sit in obviously a long amount of time 18 hours a day but feel great and comfortable in it and therefore want to keep it for longer um, and and they're invested in the design process because it reflects their body shape specifically to them and I could talk about modularity and 
and repairability and maintenance, meaning that that product can also be uh, looked after really well over time. But it's actually the crux of it is investing the consumer in the product through the design process so they have more ownership over the final result and want to keep it and use it for longer. So often when, when a company will come to us, they, they might talk about um, commercial goals. Um, you know, how much revenue should a product um, generate? How will they expand into new sectors or new geographies? And, and the business of design and the design of business is, is really important to me, meaning that um, a piece of design that's invested in by a company should have a measurable impact on improving the performance of that company. Um, you know, the, the KPIs around whether design is successful um, shouldn't just be functional and emotional, it should also be commercial impact. Having said that, um, I, I truly believe that designers have a, um, a great responsibility to make a difference, um, to really um, look at all of the factors that are changing around, that, around us, all of these ingredients, whether, whether that's you know, very difficult situations like, like the pandemic, whether it's the, the global state of sustainability and, and, and climate, um, whether it's the production tools we, we have around us. But um, you know, it, it's important to focus on impact. It's important to um, be mindful, you know, but designers can't do it on their own. Um, you need governments, you need companies, you need scientists, to all come together with designers to frame what those new opportunities and possibilities are for a better future. Um, you know, we're very kind of mindfully driven here. Um, we want to create products and do create products that are holistically good for not just the person, but also the world around us. You know, do they make the person happier? Do they make the person healthier? And do they make the world a happier and healthier place around them? Um, but, but, but it is a big part of what, what makes Leia special. It's, it's not a traditional old school uh, design consultancy where we just uh, produce everything that uh, everyone asks us to. We are very conscious of having the right conversations, of discussing the most important points. So we, we sit some, somewhere between um, a great um, design for business and um, really mindful design for the person and planet.